A BMJ analysis has found that at least 11 of the 17 members of the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition have conflicts of interest with the likes of Nestle, sugar manufacturer Tate and Lyle, and the world's largest ice cream producer, Unilever. Sakin is a powerful group of people appointed as independent experts, which provides advice for the government. Since its establishment in 2000, the committee has produced high-profile guidelines on daily salt and sugar intake, vitamin D supplements, and feeding babies. But there is concern that both Sakin and the previous governments reviewing its recommendations have not done enough to curb rising levels of obesity and diet-related ill health. Conflicts within the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition damage the credibility and the reputation of the committee itself. We have a lot of data that show that even quite small financial conflicts, tiny gifts, really do significantly affect behaviour, they affect policy, they affect outcomes. Our concern is that the committee and its integrity might be undermined by these ties to the food industry. That's not to say that individual scientists have been corrupted. This is a, a systemic challenge. But there's now really good evidence that the conflicts of interest at the interface of science and policy can skew either specific policies or public narratives in favour of the food industry in ways which ultimately undermine public health. A spokesperson for the Department of Health and Social Care says no member of the committee is employed directly by the food and drinks industry and that all of them have a duty to act in the public interest and to be independent and impartial. Other experts say that the conflicts of interest within SACN reflect the lack of funding for nutrition research. They say that removing experts with industry links from the committee, as some have suggested, would diminish the committee's expertise. I think that would be quite a tricky high risk strategy to have no members of a nutrition advisory committee that had any links to the food industry. The way research is often constructed in the UK is that research funders require some um, academic, uh, some partnership with the food industry and you get higher scores in the process if you have that relationship. Some committees around the world have taken the decision not to have anybody with any possible ties with the food industry and my experience is that that weakens the committee because people tend not to be research active. I have a great deal of sympathy with scientists who uh, take industry money to do their research. We do not adequately use public funds to fund particularly research in nutrition. Part of that is because industry is so willing to fund it, so there isn't, there isn't a demand. That said, you cannot have the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition having relationships with these companies that are causing the problem. If we are serious about bringing the pandemic of diet-related disease in the UK under control, the most important but insufficient first step we must take is to deconflict the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition. It must not and cannot have financial conflicts of interest with the industry that it is commentating on and uh, ultimately seeking to regulate. It's what we did, did with tobacco. It was really important with tobacco and we must now do it with food. It's worth just adding.